given the recent progress in interventional EUS, now is an opportune time to look back at the history of EUS to see how we got to where we are. Jean DeMagno from the Mayo Clinic is credited with originating the concept of endoscopic ultrasound, but it was the Olympus Corporation that pursued this idea and was the first to bring the technology to market in the form of a mechanical radial echo endoscope. The first clinical use began in the early 1980s, and the early epicenters for its evaluation and clinical application were in Munich and Amsterdam. Mike Kimmy, working at the University of Washington, confirmed the histologic correlates to the endosonographic layers of the gut wall. Meanwhile, Lactio, working in Amsterdam, meticulously correlated endoscopic, EUS, CT, and surgical findings and developed an atlas, which became our first major teaching aid. Mike Sivak from the Cleveland Clinic was the first to adopt EUS in the United States, followed by Charlie Lightdale in New York. In the late 1980s, Olympus America wanted to support the wider adoption of EUS. To accomplish this, they chose five academic centers with particular interest in EUS. This group, was called the EUS Users Group. With the support of Olympus, the group was responsible for teaching early adopters of EUS, as well as evaluating new prototypes. This was a very effective mechanism for disseminating EUS and was later applied to the market in India. The initial application of EUS was diagnostic and included GI cancer staging and the evaluation of submucosal masses. In the early 1990s, Peter Vilmon, using a Pentax linear array echoendoscope, is credited with performing the first EUS-guided FNA. Our group at Indiana University and Ken Chang at UC Irvine are credited with performing the first EUS FNA in the United States. The application of FNA propelled a wider application of EUS and dominated research over the next 15 years. The first interventional EUS was EUS-guided pseudocyst drainage performed in Nibsehendra's unit in Hamburg, Germany, and published in 1992. Over the course of the next 15 years, most currently applied EUS interventions were developed, but integration into clinical practice was slow. Beginning in 1982, Olympus sponsored a biannual meeting dedicated to EUS. These meetings proved to be critical in the development of EUS because it brought together leading endosonographers from around the world and provided a forum for exchange of ideas. The 2008 meeting was held in San Francisco and was dedicated solely to linear array endosonography. Prior to the meeting, a working group gathered to assess the state of the art of interventional EUS and provide a roadmap for device development and research especially randomized trials that would promote greater clinical adoption of these techniques. The meeting proceedings were published in a supplement of gastrointestinal endoscopy in January of 2009, and the meeting and subsequent publication should be credited with accelerating the development of interventional EUS. In response to the working group recommendations, the first randomized trial in interventional EUS was conducted in 2008 by Shyam Veradera Julu from UAB, which compared EUS and standard endoscopy for the drainage of pseudocysts. This was followed by more randomized clinical trials and the development of dedicated devices such as LAMS. As a result of these studies, Endoscopic management of necrotizing pancreatitis is now preferred over surgery, with EUS serving as a cornerstone of the treatment. Our group conducted the first randomized trial comparing EUS with ERCP for malignant biliary obstruction and reported equal efficacy. There are now many high-quality studies that have proven the value of interventional EUS for multiple indications. By 2008, EUS had become a standard, well-established endoscopic technique in many countries. However, some countries were still significantly behind in adopting the technology. India was a prime example. In 2008, India had only five units 
despite significant economic progress. Shyamvera Derajulu conceived of the idea to resurrect the original EUS users group concept and collaborated with Olympus to develop a strategy to train a core group of endoscopists who could then go on to train other Indian gastroenterologists, thus creating a sustainable system to advance EUS in India. Individuals and institutions were specifically identified who had the potential for active clinical application, research, and training in EUS. The group included the five major teaching institutions and was also geographically diverse. Workshops were organized and the first took place in April 2009 in Chennai. These workshops consisted of hands-on training labs. The first was held at Madras Veterinary College, lectures on how to perform EUS, and live demonstrations. Over the course of the next five years, we traveled to India 21 times to support these workshops, and countless endoscopists from India visited our institutions at UAB and MUSC to observe cases and build relationships. This effort culminated with Olympus choosing Chennai to host their biannual meeting in 2014. 750 delegates from 67 countries attended. There are now nearly 600 EUS installations in India. A new generation of endoscopists in India have seized the opportunity and are now contributing regularly to the advancement of EUS through educational courses, demonstrations, and publications. This experience demonstrates how an organized, well-designed, and sustained program can result in significant adoption of a new technology which impacts an entire country. The history of EUS is interesting because it captivated a generation of young endoscopists who followed the golden era of ERCP. And just as ERCP evolved from diagnostic to therapeutic, EUS is evolving in a similar way. The benefit of knowing history is to avoid redundancy in research and to avoid past mistakes in clinical care. The future of EUS is bright.